Hi, my name is Benedict for Hire Hertz. I did some uh, some drum program reviews not so long ago, uh, specifically um, Stephen Slate Drum 5, his free version, and uh, Easy Drum. And uh, I was aware of Modo at the time, but I don't believe they had a free version. This seems to be new in the latest update, 1.5, I believe it is. And that makes it a, a, a straight out contender, a competitor for uh, for these things. And so the question is, what does it do right? What does it do wrong? Is it worth investing the time and effort despite the fact that it is free? Well, it's free, bearing in mind you've got to sign up and set up an account and, and wade through the install process. Could have been a little easier, but could have been a lot worse. So I guess we going to have a look. We've got the obvious sorts of things. Let's take over and listen to it in context. It's all very well to listen to, to drums or any synth out of context, but it's in context where they really start to become what they are. So, very interesting drum sound, and we'll walk through how we get there. Uh, there are some really good things about this. There are a couple of things that maybe could use an improvement over time, but for a free program, there's not really anything to say that was a bad idea. What I'll do is we'll go through and mute the parts that we aren't really using. have some bus processing, let's get rid of that, and the bass, we don't need that, get rid of the mix reverb, and the extra layer of saturation on the front. So we're now just listening to the Modo drum. It's from IK Multimedia, now IK Multimedia are a Pretty well-known name. They have some uh, some pretty large brands within their thing. Sample Tank being the big one. Sample Tank is not a name that's spoken as much as it used to be. Uh, I could never really get my heart or soul into it, so I didn't go down that path. Uh, the T-Rex thing, same thing. Couldn't really get my head into it. Uh, but nonetheless, that, that, that has been a successful product. Uh, I was aware of their Modo base and had read how it's supposedly all physically modeled, but I was just like, yeah, whatever. But you'll see there that, or not here, that I'm using Modo base because I figured, oh, well, seeing I'm doing this, I might as well try Modo base at the same time, see if it seems like something that's worth it. And it, to be honest, is really rather interesting. I have not dug into it past getting that sound to work in this mix and left it alone, but definitely doesn't seem to suck. But what was interesting was hearing that Moto Drum, as I said, had come out now with a, a free version of their kit, which is not unusual for IK. They, they often have a freely accessible version of their core product, because really these days their, um, their thing is in selling libraries, is in selling presets. So they let you have the, the, the core architecture and then work on the assumption that you're just going to keep slavishly buying presets. Good, bad, up to you. It's not a thing I super love. The fact that they make this available for free, well, obviously that's kind of cool. Um, you got to work out where you sit on that one. Groundbreaking real-time modal synthesis technology, which is not apparently explained anywhere. Now I kind of know what modal synthesis is, the form of physical modeling, um, often built around a similar sort of thing as impulse response on the logic that that represents the real world. And in a sense, it kind of does. Uh, in that if I hit a drum with a feather, the drum responds differently. 
than if I hit the drum with a brick because the nature of the object that I'm dropping on the drum will define how the drum propagates that. And of course, the construction of the drum and all those sorts of things. This works on that logic. Uh, they say that um, it's not built on um, sample. I'm not 100% convinced on that. Uh, it may be built on nothing but impulses, but I have a sneaky feeling that samples form the impulse. Happy enough to be wrong, little frustrated that, as is usual, they don't really explain their technology or how it works. In many ways, in this case, perhaps there's no point, because I think most of their user market don't care. Um, and they've also narrowed the choices that you can make in the synth down to things that are applicable only to certain kinds of outcomes. And that's probably, again, very good for the people who are most likely want to use this. I did see a claim somewhere that this was the most thorough drum modeling synth ever. All I can say is Pinocchio knows on that one, guys. Really, really, really. While not a big name, there's a fellow called Quilcom who's uh, put out a whole pile of devices which genuinely work on some kind of physical modeling thing, and you can get pretty darn detailed with them. I'm not going to encourage you to go get them because I found the plugins buggy, but I did use them across one album. There's some particularly really big drum things, Tyco type drums, which were built using his machine. It just became too buggy, so I couldn't be bothered going on with them, but it's a notable thing through that record. Um, and Reason. We're in Reason right now. And Kong. Kong came out a long time ago, and Kong actually contains physically modelled kick, snare, toms. And I think they're more detailed than this, because they don't say you can snap to the this size snare or that size snare. You can just move all the way through, like a real synth, so you can make weird things. Does it sound as realistic as this? No, but it creates an interesting sound. So just just be aware there's a certain amount of uh, marketing involved in this, and that's always a little off-putting to me when it's supposedly a professional product. Why gild a lily that shouldn't need gilding? In terms of options, you see the price up there, 300 euro, couldn't be bothered to translate what that is and to Australian dollars or US dollars, you can work it out. We're really looking at the CS version, 1.5 is right there. You get one kit, the studio kit, and you can make a certain amount of change to that within their system. They're obviously encouraging you to buy one of the higher versions. Every extra kit that you purchase, and there's no way of telling what the real difference between these kits is, is it just that somebody inside has changed the parameters, or is it just that they're feeding them with different samples to trigger their modeling process? Don't know, but each of those kits that you buy, if I go to buy the, the metal kit, it's gonna be $50 or 50 euro. So this one comes with three new kits for 150. At 300, then, all 13, yes, you're, you're getting economies of scale, but I don't know many drummers who have more than one drum kit. So while it's uber fashionable to be like, oh, I've got access to 47 trillion drum kits, um, I'm not sure whether that's entirely practical in real world sense. At least start with the free, work with the one drum kit, see if you like cut of this program's jib. In many ways, I do. Might as well run through the good and bad, then we will dig into the guts of the program. I think overall, it's got good sounds. They do suffer perhaps a little from the, um, the physical modeling thing, but they're nowhere near as synthetically physically modeled as Reason's Kong. Um, but you need to be aware that these are not perfectly processed, pre-made sounds in quite the same way. So it's a good and a bad. What's good is that in certain ways, the kit does behave somewhat like 
a real kit. But does it quite meet their hype of being kind of interchangeable with a, a real drum recorded in a real room? I don't really think so. But the sounds are quite good if you're prepared to to, to sort of set sail uh, with sample drums, then these are no different in many ways, but they're not the equal of having a real kit that is nicely recorded. Having a poor kit that's poorly played and poorly recorded probably isn't going to be quite as good as this. But there's a certain something that a real kit, even if adequately played and adequately recorded, will bring that samples and the like just won't bring. But most of you I know have grown up on sample replaced things. You know, it's like we didn't realize with Def Leppard's Pyromania at the time that that was a sample record. Physically modeled, great, interesting. But again, I have some reservations as to how hardcore or complete their synthesis is that I have a sneaky feeling that it's actually driven probably by samples or something like that. Not showing how their system works wouldn't be of any consequence to most people, but I actually care. If I'm going to use a thing, I like to understand how it works a bit deeper, and because it doesn't show itself, because it's it's skinned with this whole sort of, do you want a 14-inch drum or a 13-inch drum, then I feel like I'm kind of held out from that. Your call, it is a free version can't really bitch on that. The bad, it is a little cluttered. And I guess that is the nature of something that's trying to do so many things at once, that sometimes you have to go here to be able to go there. And essentially all of these players are doing that. They're trying to shove far too much into too small a window. In many ways, I would probably, if I were using this uh, based on how I've gone with similar sorts of things, I would probably be turning off all of the features that they're trying to jam in there and do it all outside because the door is is better equipped, it's better laid out, but entirely up to you how you go. And again, just that warning through marketing, there is probably going to feel like there's this constant lure to buy more kits. Oh, well, if you buy the something or other else kit, then suddenly you'll have the pro sound of Aretha Franklin or whatever, and just kind of like, you know what? When Aretha went into the studio, let's say she was down Muscle Shoals, I'm pretty confident that if you walked into the Muscle Shoals in a recording session, the Swampers were sitting there with one drum kit. They weren't sitting there with 13 different drum kits and the drummer moving from one to another, if they wanted to change the feel, then the drummer changed his feel, or they might have moved things around a little bit. But there wasn't this sense of, oh, no, man, this, 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 like, you know, kit is just like, no good, man, I've got to swap it for that kit, you know, because that's the proper sound. It just wasn't the way it was done. And I think that kind of mentality does a lot of damage to uh, developing musicians want to be musicians because unfortunately they're more focused on that that oh if I if I have you know like the official model then you know I'll be like getting it right and then they're not really listening to or hearing or working what they've got you know if you live on the land and you grow carrots for a living what have you got to work with you can't hire in uh, some some digital tool that makes your carrots more pro you just got to work the land that you have got uh, and sometimes that means not growing carrots. Righto, let's walk through the features of the instrument. There are a lot of them. The display is pretty big, but it does fit in around my head. We've got the usual. This is just the kit we're hearing on its own, no external processing from the mix anymore. And this is my pad. I programmed my own pattern because I just don't mightily dig the groove thing. We'll work our way across the tabs in a sensible order. This is where you start at and you've got the studio drum. You can't interact with it. They tell us a little bit about it. And then they try to encourage us to get into all these other possible kits. Extreme. Um, 
because uh, I don't feel like I've encountered situations that clearly show what would make the jazzy kit better or whatever, then the only way to do that is to actually go and purchase it from what I can gather. Happy to be wrong, but I couldn't work out how to be sure of what happens. That's just a splash screen, essentially. We can customize. Now this is where we start to see what we're more used to. On this side, the old drummer's perspective thing, and we can customize a kit. With the CS version, the free version, this screen is a little, a little close to useless. Um, it has a function, but you have to come to the screen to get the function, just kind of a little bit of an annoyance. Uh, but with the other unlocked kits, you can access and make your kit bigger and do stuff. I just don't know how. With this, it is possible to create Frankenstein kits. So we could click on our kick drum and say, ooh, I want the red one, and swap it in. But it's not available here, so we're not going down that road. Next, we'll look at grooves, because I know that's what most people will be thinking, like, oh, but I get these grooves, it's like having a real drummer man. Uh, no. Not because their grooves are necessarily wrong. You can't get this to sync to the, the door from what I can gather, so pressing play in the door won't actually play this in time with the, what's going on. That does seem like a flaw compared to its competitors because people are going to want to audition these grooves inside their existing piece, or at least they should. But maybe, maybe IK are right, that people are just going to be putting these things in first and then adding some inconsequential instrument crap um, to justify their drum groove. Um, whatever. Uh, that's, it's, it's a little different. Um, right, wrong, don't know. Um, I may have, because I didn't read the manual as is typical on these things, uh, so there may be some feature that's not self-evident. It's not in the settings, because there's kind of nothing in the settings. We can narrow down. Now, I'm not sure that you've got the access to the whole Groove library. I would hope that that would be the, the truth of the matter. But we can say rock, two-bar pattern, and and then we can pick them and we can unchoose things. So metal, oh, metal without a tambourine, that just seems a bit sad. Oh, at this point I probably should say that there are some preset kits. Uh, didn't even go through them, to be perfectly honest. I was more interested in what, the, what I can actually do with the program than what somebody else has done. Uh, so with the grooves, you can go through them. When you find a thing that you like, if I like that, I can drag and drop it in my sequence so the MIDI appears. Unlike Slate, I don't get any extra useless controllers or anything. I just get the MIDI and it plays back exactly like I was hearing it here. Good. That's exactly what one would expect. But there doesn't seem to be any facility for chaining into songs or anything. And honestly, I'm as happy with that because, as I said, I probably wouldn't be using that in practical terms because a door is far better designed to do that kind of stuff than is a window like this. So there are a whole pile of groove bits. The reason that I have some concerns with them and generally don't use them is because they don't actually represent a real drummer. I'm not saying they weren't played by a drummer at some stage, some guy sitting there with a, an electronic kit or whatever going midi note, midi note, midi note, midi note, midi note, midi notes. But the, they are not with regards to a particular piece of music. And drumming is not, as the way people often think, some thing that's done independent. Drumming, in, in its greater sense, is done as part of the music. So you have the music, and the drummer comes in and interprets what's happening in the music with hitting things. If you have any questions on that, go watch Bill Bruford. You will see one of the most lovely drum interpreters 
you will ever see. He just flows across that kit, and it's the complete opposite of this, which is a kind of thing. Nothing against the drummer who's playing this. It's just, this is not a drummer. This is just a pile of loops that are in MIDI, which is cool, because then you could pull them apart if you wanted, if you were going, okay, how does the Afro-Cuban thing work? Let's say you were, you were wanting to <laughs> know how to do that, the little roll thing. Then you could pull the MIDI and look at it and go, ah, that's what it looks like in MIDI, and then go off and make your own. That's my opinion on that kind of stuff. Now, we can be able to edit elements. So let's take our snare. I just realized you can play different parts of the snare from there. Nonetheless, if we hit edit element, and I think it's the only place we can get to it from, we can now access parts of our snare. And this is where it gets interesting. We can change clear for coated. The difference is small, but it's it's there. We can change the construction. And we can hear a difference in the sound. There doesn't seem to be any explanation. Maybe there is in the manual as to how these different constructions affect the, the, the sound of our snare. We can't change the bottom head. We can change our snare tension. I must say it's quite different the way the snare tension works and feels compared to in Reasons Kong. We can also change the volume of the bottom or the top of our snare. So we're hearing only the, which means that we can make a variety of drum type sounds. And we can also choose what the object is and what have you. We can Change the tuning of our head, which is giving those little butterflies around the outside of drums, or these screw things. We can change our tuning. Some things uh, you have to manually type a number in if you want to go to zero or something. Other things are control. But if they've got a number, they generally don't respond to the control. An issue I do have with the snare and a few other drums is that there doesn't seem to be much in the way of how to control ringing. And one of the big issues with a real drum kit is an immense amount of ringing. And it's possible to get some annoying ringing in these, which while conducive to the argument that these behave like a, a real kit in a real room, is annoying in the mix, especially for people who are used to samples which are all good and clean and tidy. So if you do notice ringing, it's either in a particular head or it's in how one head is influencing another, especially if you've got something like tom buzz open, because it'll mean that your snare can appear in your toms or your toms can appear in your snare. I didn't read the which it is, but that can create ringing so you can end up with a who tone going on way past you want it where you want it to i would really rather have a control here that allows me to minimize that now people will say oh but that's what real drums are like and i absolutely 100 percent agree with you as i already said they are shocking for that kind of stuff and maybe that is better solved or traditionally solved with compressors at the individual mic level and what have you. But seeing we're playing PM, where we're reinventing the wheel, why not give us a super convenient feature? Don't know. It's one of those things, I don't know whether I'm right or wrong in it, it's just there. We can then control how we go into room mics and overhead mics, which we will get to later. If you feel like you've messed up a, an instrument, you can reset it to fault or save it off or load a, a, your, your very favoritist of snares. That's, that's really rather cool. Uh, you can go through and do this for all things.
things. We can edit our things. Some things don't have a page of their own, and there's not a lot you can do to them. And where is this fella? There we go. Now, unless they're extremely good in their synthesis, I'm, again, not 100% convinced that that isn't a sample. Or sample-driven. So not as much control as I would expect for a real physical model, because uh, physical models that I've used of these sorts of things, you can get some truly fascinating sounds. So if you're after a true physical modeling drum synth, this isn't really it. This is essentially a sample kit in how it sounds and behaves, if not actually in how it's generating, even though they say it's not. But the ability to go through and edit elements is, is interesting. Actually, let's have a look at that. Okay, I've got to exit that. See, this is where it gets confusing because you've why can't I change? It seems annoying that I can't change when I'm already there. I have to go back out. So, toms. So you can edit your toms as a group. That's good. So actually, I didn't open the tom thing before. But we can get into... Actually, I should go back to the snare. My apologies. Let's undo that. Because uh, I forgot to run through sizes here. See, they're preset rather than allowing us to go from the ridiculous to the ridiculous with sensible in between. It's kind of told us, oh, well, they're the, they're the safe things you can do. That's interesting, be able to get it to, to glitch, which does show us that there is some kind of physical modeling going on in here because it's getting part way through its, its modeling process and then suddenly, oh, I'll have to do something else. So you can hear the parameter leap. So we know it's not just snare, it's just, not just samples. There, there is some kind of physical modeling going on in here. Um, the fact that you can only choose from preset things you can argue and say, but that's that's true to drums. You can't buy a drum that's you know forty seven meters wide and and five millimeters deep. But by the time we get to the kind of pedantry of saying, oh, I own thirteen different drum kits, then why wouldn't we own a drum that was like this? So it's one of those things that. It comes down to personal preference. I'm one of those guys who'd like to say, well, what happens if I do that? It's probably not going to, to feature in the next Metallica record, but it could be super useful, especially for someone like myself or someone doing film work. So you can change the parameters, but the parameters tend to be quite preset in your options. So element editing, and then there's a play style, which on the surface looks super interesting. But I don't hear a massive difference, at least not compared to what I'm used to hearing from real drums, from samples, and of course from records. Um, so, that's supposed to be side and it just doesn't sound like, maybe I'm just not finding the... But it's got a left and a right hand, and you can play left hand here on the keyboard, right hand on the keyboard here. So this is showing us that the, the model is ringing from here, and this is showing us that the model is ringing from the center. And move it, and it's where the ring is that... So we can change the body of our sound, but again, I don't necessarily feel like we can change it as much as I would hope for. We can narrow down, but it feels like one of those controls that kind of doesn't seem to do an awful lot. Um, maybe it will on the, the right. The 
again, don't feel like it does a lot. So it's one of those things that, to me, I'm sadly going to say, feels feels more like a novelty than an actual thing. This is kind of cool. We can take our sticks and we can actually separate them out left and right. So we can turn our drumstick round for a heavy thwack there. And we can have nylon on the right. Or if we pair the two together, Again, I'm not convinced that we end up with as much variety as we, or at least as I would like to, to hear. But it is there. You can vary things a little on, on certain things. Um, play style on these. No. Okay, so play style only allows us to change snare toms and kick. So it's, it's a little more limited than you think. It's, it's offering you variety on the kick for heel up and heel down. I'm not sure what the normal... Okay, that seems to... So heel up seems to provide us with a, a brighter sound. Heel down seems to give us a, um, a, a richer, warmer sound. So rock or particularly jazz seems like it'd be heel down, but I have noticed that a lot of um, metal drummers their feet are like this rather than like this. So you, your your older rock or, or jazz drummer will be like this and your, your metal drummer will be kind of like this because they're getting more punch on their thing. You can change the, the beta. Great for metal and the like or anywhere where you will pop where you want that click to come through wood is sort of somewhere in between so if you're listening to the drums in particular the kick and go it's just not clicky enough then plastic beaters with a heel up so that's that's a pretty nice sort of a feature um, so some things affect good change others I'm not convinced whether they affect enough change we then have the ability to map we get our snare, we can map where its different versions appear. So snare left, snare right, side stick. Oh, that's a side stick there. I've been going with the rim shot. And rim shot right. Yeah. So, so there are the different hits associated with that. You can take your velocity curve, in which case is always 100% or always as light as possible. There is obviously some variety in how that, that snare sounds. I'm not convinced that that variety is as non-linear as a real snare would be. Um, but good enough for most people's productions, I think. Then we move to the room feature. Now, these are impulse responses. They are convolution. They are not an algorithmic reverb. Anyone who follows me uh, knows that I'm not a fan of impulse response or convolution. While I get the logic, I don't think it pans out, or at least it doesn't pan out as natural in my world. I don't think we create an analog I think we create the equivalent of bunny ears on an Instaham um, camera. Uh, but so be it. It's what's here. You don't have to use it. I, have, in the piece there, have used it as the drum room sound and then have imposed the algorithmic reverb over the top. But they offer us different spaces. Booth. Mid-studio, so it gets a little fuller. Garage. I quite like that. It's, it's, a, it's a nice big full sound. Bunker, large studio, cathedral. That's just kind of silly. That's just filling holes. Club, fair enough. Venue. Or a warehouse, which oddly enough has more 
whoomp to it than some of the other sizes. But nonetheless, they're there, they're amusing, you can use them or not use them. Uh, it is possible to set the level of that from here. They suggest that because they're using impulse and their physical modeling technology, that the uh, connection between the kit and the room are somehow far more organic. I'll leave you to work out whether that, uh, whether that actually comes through or not. They then include a mixer. Now, uh, this is not a bad mixer as these things go, but this is the point where I really started to feel particularly kind of like, oh, there are so many things all jammed into this little window. So working on the assumption that this has multiple ads, which it probably does, but I didn't even stop to look, um, then you might well just go, let's send all of this out and use my door features. But people would be upset if it didn't have this. So it is here and you can, in theory, do pretty decent drum mixing in here once you get used to how it works. Uh, can you... That kind of, oh, oh yeah, you can scroll. Ah, that's where you can access these other things. I wondered why you couldn't access them. And there's a there's the invisible, oh yeah, once I see it move, I can see it. There's an invisible scroll, guard, scroll bar. Aces on GUI guys for giving us a feature that we can't see is there. It's so stylishly disappeared that we didn't even notice that it was there. So I'd sort of thought, oh, how do you mix those extra elements? And I thought, oh, it must be just for when you use multi outs or something. But no, you can access your cowbells and and uh, and metal bracelets and what have you on your mixer. Okay, great. So you've got the ability to mix things. You've got the ability to bring up kick one and kick two. Unexpected? Fair enough. Each channel has an EQ. So you can it off, on, and EQ to your heart's content. My advice, while very tempting to EQ things just as I'm showing here in, in solo, you'll go and EQ all of these things on their own and each sound will be amazing on its own. You'll put them together and you'll be like, what went wrong? Because too much amazing at once is like having 40 sumo wrestlers try and jam their way out of a little conventional door at one go. You'll, you'll run into some serious problems. So at least if you're doing this, have your pattern going. Not that one. Have your pattern going as you do this so that you can hear how the elements fit in the kit. But we've got the ability to get pretty darn pointy with our uh, with our um, cue and to to cut and boost by uh, what's 20 DB so you know that's that that's pretty healthy overall you can turn points on and off uh, and swap them for different shapes all of that is is pretty good you can even save off EQs why would you do that don't answer it it's a at best, a rhetorical question. You then have the ability to insert effects. So these are like your own little VST, but not yours, theirs, inside. Uh, so sorry if I gave you the impression that you could get all excited and put, bring your own VST in here. No indication that that is the case. You've got access to various things. So another EQ, assuming you've run out of bands. Um, Different types of compressors. I think they all look the same. A gate, clipper. It's just nasty. <laughs> Crusher, you need to work out how these work. They don't necessarily work in the traditional way. Um, then you've got access to reverbs, which are set up on the assumption that you're going to be using them on a send. Uh, delays. That's interesting, it's only coming out on one side. Don't know. I love the way there's always a difference between delay and tape delay. Yeah, it's got some modulation on it. You can put things through. 
phaser. That seems like the world's least interesting phaser. Probably work better on um, on snares and what have you than, than kick drum. But you can put things through layers of processing right from the word go. Again, my advice is go very carefully because you'll process each of your individual hits till they're like, and then the, the kit will die when it comes together. As I said, you've got some sends, so you can send to some buses, which we will look at the effects over here. You can pan your thing. Now, I've got that pan to the right and it's coming out on my left. Yeah, we'll get into that later. But that's, uh, that's poorly thought through, boys and girls. Um, control clicks coming back to where it is. Um, this I find a little confusing. It says zero here, but then this reads at minus 12. Maybe that's supposed to be, oh, that's the VU. Or, actually, no, that's a VU for here. It's, it's a little unclear. I'd rather that my meters match my, um, my fader. To me, that makes more sense, um, but whatever, it is there. So, cool. Uh, second kick will leave a lone snare, same sort of thing. You can trigger them from here, but they just trigger it full blast, um, which is okay if you're one of those producers who has one level. Um, I, I like to have two, you know, quiet and, you know, not quite quiet. This whole sort of everything has to be running at 13 um, strikes me as a little sad. So again, established tradition in a lot of doors is probably the lower you play, the lower the velocity. Even if you only give people four different levels, then it's more useful than there's just like, let's hit that as hard as we possibly can. Thor have bad day. Um, sorry, Hulk have bad day. Um, so all our channels here, cool. They all come together. That's, that all makes sense. Oh, we can send them to different places. Oh, that's how we send to ads. Yes, so we can send to paired ads. So to, we can send all of these to stereo ads. Winning. That's probably what I'd be doing. Oh, uh, there I mixer presets. I don't even want to get into that ball of rent. Again, we've got the ability to EQ at the master. We can add effects at our master. I would rather do them at the master than at the individual um, head, but that's me because I like to have my drum as a kit rather than each individual thing pulled out. But up to you how you do it. But I kind of liked the way that worked. Now we have, and she will do the effects first because we talked about effects more recently. You can send things to effects, snare, snare, snare. Send that to bus one which happens to have a tape delay on it. So send and return just like you used to. Cool, no worries with that at all. Then we have overheads and group. And we need to understand how kits are mic'd. If we have a look at the customized, does it? No, there's no sense of mics. Maybe there is on the, the model. No, there isn't. Anyway, commonly you have a mic here, a mic on the sometimes on the inside of the drum. The snare will have a mic on the top or the bottom or both. Not uncommon not to have any mics on any of the metal work, sometimes on a hi-hat. Um, and then you'll commonly have mics sitting up here in the room. They're the overheads. So they're sitting just above and they pick up the metalwork and the entirety of the kit. And some people like to make more of the kick drum from the overhead than from the kick drum. So build from the overheads and then just beef up with your individual mics. I'm prone to doing it that way. And the other one is that somewhere further back in the room, either behind the drummer or in front of the drummer, depending upon the room, somewhere in the room, there'll be another mic or another pair of mics, and that's called the room. So that's getting the reverb, because when you pull uh, drums 
out of reverb space. We might just get rid of that. Um, and we pull things out of their overhead and room space. See how much presence we lose. So pressing the overhead and room will allow us to choose how much we're sending whilst this is open. When it's closed, it goes back to the effect send. So again, it's one of those things to find a thing you have to be there. Um, it, it works. It's just you've got to remember where things are. You'll get used to it. Uh, but once this is open, then we could say, look, I don't want as much of something to go. Let's pick our snare. Let's say I don't want them to go to overhead room at all. I want that to be a little bit brighter. And then I could say I want to put it through its own play verb. Because that sounds something. This sounds nice, it's possibly getting into um, over-processing, but that sounds nice. It makes that snare really stand out. So now if we put the overhead, we're not hearing a lot of difference. And into the room. I assume that what goes into the overheads and rooms is processed by this but I'm not sure, maybe that's in the manual. But they're the things that you can do. Remember, the room is the thing that we've chosen here, so it's that impulse response thing. If you do not like their rooms, then kill it here. And then you can use your master area to add your own kind of whatever you want to call that drum room. Obviously a much more almost 80s process kind of sound. Uh, and then from there, we would commonly be sending to our room reverb, which in this case is like an early reflection sort of thing made with the free hertz delay. Pop that back out again. So mixing as such is, on, on board mixing as such, is really, it's really quite generous. Like there's a lot that you can do. Just really take your time to understand. Be careful about over-processing. Be careful also about naively working on the assumption that what they've given you because they're more pro than you is immediately going to sound perfect or like it should um, because they've made decisions and there are some limits or possible flaws in their decisions but that's not to say you can't make your own sound again my personal opinion would be i might use some of their onboard stuff um, in that i am more likely to want to just bring in a drum mix then separate out. But mostly when I am mixing, I just get everything separated out, in which case the first thing that I do is to put them into a bus and work out how do I want this drum kit to sound in its room and then push that into the room in which the song is working. So that's essentially what's happening here. And last but not least, I said I'd talk about this, we'll get this running. There are two choices, and I got really annoyed with Slate, and it totally put me off him and his SSDD, because you were stuck in drummer perspective. Now, this is drummer perspective. When you're sitting there behind the kit, you reach over to your left-hand side and play the hi-hat, and to you, you're hearing it in your left ear. But rock and roll is not you. It's not about you. 
if you think rock and roll's about you, then you've probably got a limited future. Rock and roll's about the audience. Do you know how we know that? It's because what got you interested in rock and roll? Seeing Robert Plant, Rod Stewart, Robert Smith on stage. Seeing Metallica on stage, although I didn't thought they were the most exciting on stage, to be perfectly blunt. Uh, but seeing them on stage. Now, where was Lars's hi-hat? Well, you kind of take it as all being. But you know what? You're on this side of the kit. So if that hi-hat gets played, where is the hi-hat? On the right-hand side. So you can be listening to the drum kit as though you were the drummer or as though you were the audience member. Now, if you're mixing music just for yourself and the only person who's ever going to listen to it and drummers rule, then go for it. Otherwise, use some caution because whilst you're using the drummer's perspective, let's pan our, where is my hi-hat? There. Now, with drummer's perspective, that's done to the right because I've panned it manually. But what would happen is that drummer's perspective, the hi-hat would be panned like this. And the hi-hat wasn't panned. That's probably a good thing because Slate, they were all pre-panned in the samples. So here, we've got this. Actually, that's better. If I move to audience perspective, it means that any panning that's been done on metal work goes the other way. Now, I'm, I'm delighted to see that, but I sort of question how it works because it only seems partially thought through. Uh, maybe that's for if you open something like one of their presets or something and they've panned it for drummer and you go, but that's all backwards, in which case this swaps whatever was left to right, whatever was right to left, in which case that's good. Uh, but if you're just panning, doing your own panning from the get-go, I think you're going to naturally pan with whatever your preference is. So let's pop this all back in the mix. Turn all our bits back on. There's our reverb. Bass. Group processing. Bass guitar. Electric string. So my, my conclusions are, for free, I think it's a tremendous piece of kit. I think there's a lot to recommend. There are some frustrations in the sense that their engine, I don't think, is as complete or as accessible um, as I would like it to be. But to be fair, most of their potential user base don't want the kind of level of control that I want. Uh, and so they want this feeling of, I can turn to a 14-inch snare or a 12-inch snare um, because the idea of a two-meter snare is completely outside their ken. You know, it's, it's like, oh, but, but, but well, what band used that? Um, fair enough. I can see the point on that in that, um, well, why would we offer somebody something that they can't use. It also means where you've got these controls that can go from the ridiculous to the ridiculous with a few points in between that are authentic, then people will get lost. I just like that ability to do. I, I would dig it a lot more if there were a um, an advanced screen and we could open that up and have a much greater access. Things like the snare playing position, I just don't feel were particularly effective at all. Um, but to be fair, if this were 
empty power, which is free, uh, then I don't have that level of control at all. So if I wanted different hits from the snare, then I need to have multiple channels of snare processed or EQ'd or whatever differently to give the impression of hits in different places. Or I'd be putting on a flanger or something or other just to move each of those hits around, which you've probably seen me do. Um, so they're, they're little fussy sorts of things, uh, but they're things that are, are worth mentioning, especially when when words that are hyperbole are are used uh, to, to describe what it is. It's an easy to access drum kit type thing in a very digital style. And it works surprisingly nicely. The, the physical modeling aspect is probably icing, not cake. Uh, it does bring some of the characteristics of a real drum kit in a real room. Uh, some of which is good, some of which is potentially annoying, but you learn to fix it because if you're working with real drums from a real room, you really have to work out how to deal with that. Otherwise, you end up with mud. Drum kits are real pain to deal with. Um, they are for the special. <laughs> That's why there are people who specialize in drum recording and drum mixing and they'll hand that mix off to the main mix engineer. I actually like doing drums but I'm aware that there's a complexity, so they've shaved off some of that. Um, an entry-level version of the product for free, we really can't and shouldn't complain about what's there is impressively capable and a very nice contender up against uh, Slate's um, SSD5 free, um, definitely against um, MT Power. I like MT Power, but this has a lot more flexibility, a lot more versatility. But you will need to set up the beginnings of those sounds a little bit better uh, or more because the MT, the sound is just there. <laughs> You can process it and change it a bit, but it is just there. They've got that one sample. Um, this this moves around a little bit, and so so that's that's really rather cool. Again, just be cautious of the lure of saying I need to own all thirteen different drum kits because I won't be pro if I don't have thirteen different drum kits. And also the the idea that stringing together those loops that you find in here are somehow the equal of having a drummer. A competent drummer will outdrum those loops every time if they're competent, like as in if they're working with your piece of music rather than just going loop, change loop, loop, another loop, which is not related to your song at all. Now, if you have any questions about the subject, please not about IK or, or the Modo thing uh, in the sense of product support because that's not uh, that's not us that's IK multimedia uh, but give it a go if you're paddling in this kind of pool of trying to make your MIDI sound real then is it going to get you there hundred percent absolutely not none of these sample things will there's, there's no way to make MIDI and real be equal but are you able to get something that's organic a bit more than the competing products, I think. Um, my frustration, as I've said several times, is that you can't go outside of their boundaries because outside of their boundaries is probably where you can find something really kind of fascinating that ultimately will feel more organic and more your thing. What if I could have that two meter um, snare with, with five millimeter depth? What, what, what if I could do that? Uh, and in making that work, in my piece with the right kind of processing, the right kind of reverbs and what have you, is probably going to end up seeming a lot more organic than something that's clearly trying to sound like. It was a Ludwig with the Swampers, but the Swampers never used a Ludwig and their Ludwig, if they had it, never actually sounded or felt like that by the time we were listening to Aretha Franklin. So, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've learned a thing or two. Uh, and most importantly, subscribe. Let us know that you're valuing what we do. Let YouTube know that 
to, that you value what we're doing. It helps us to grow, helps you to continue to get this information. Um, it's a small price to pay. Uh, and of course, we do love to get nice feedback. It encourages us far more than, uh, than many other things because it's like, oh, we know we're valued. Um, pop over to hirehertz.com. There's uh, the, the free uh, info over there as well, different stream. And don't forget, there's Hertz Delay as well which, if I say so myself, is a rather, rather cool device. We've had some lovely feedback come back from other places on the interwebs. That's it for me. You have a great day.